like when you hit obstacles, help support each other and react and respect each other. I think going through an experience like this or, or slow months or other, other situations um, is when you are becoming partners together and strengthening your, your relationship. So before calling the investors, I had like a, a few scenarios in mind, to be honest. I think worst case scenario would have been for them not to like support the decision. And, and I think best case scenario would have been for them to be like uh, super supportive and really helpful in the next steps of the transition of the company. When I thought about telling them about the news, like I, I knew they were going to be shocked. I was personally shocked, so I was expecting them to be shocked for sure. Again, you know, it's a... Uh, it's not something you're getting used to. I don't think it's something you'll get like a, a training on ever. I'm Ollie Thomas. Uh, I'm managing partner at, uh, at Expedition Growth Capital. We invested in, in Guillaume and, and Lempire around 12 months ago now. I'm David Olsen. I'm originally from Sweden, uh, but I've been in London for more than 10 years now. I joined uh, Oliver about three years ago to um, be part of the founding team of, of Expedition. I'm a principal here on the team and, and working with, with Oliver on on this investment. So Expedition is a, a specialist growth investor. We really focus on bootstrapped software companies. So we love investing in, in companies where the founders have, have built them uh, without outside capital. And obviously Lempire's you know, fantastic example of that. And we also have this focus around, around software. So everything that we do is oriented around um, finding the most interesting software companies all across Europe, usually that are competing in global markets like Lempire with half its revenue coming from the US. So in 2021, like uh, I first met Oliver and uh, and David who reached out to me like uh, a lot of other like uh, VC firms. When David like uh, first sent me like the, the message, it started on LinkedIn and then I have like this uh, shortcut with text expander which allows me with one <laughs> shortcut to send like pre-made oh, replies. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I was receiving like hundreds of messages from uh, from investors. We had announced publicly that we wanted to raise, document the entire process, then say no to the offers if we would get one in order to show that you could grow like a bootstrap company, you could be profitable running it. And after that, you actually reached out via email. And this time I was like, holy shit, like this is the best email I've ever received from an investor, especially because they had put like a, a presentation in which you were outlining all competitors, uh, your vision of the market. One of our customers had been interviewed by you. And then, you know, like on the presentation, they were his face plus, you know, like a quote from him. And I was like, okay, they went really deep into understanding our market, etc., etc. So I decided to have a chat with them and I realized that they were also offering what we call secondary or cash out, which I didn't know about back then. In normal type of investment, the money goes directly inside the company. We call that like cash in, which is the classic fundraising. However, what they were offering in the cash out or secondary is they would actually buy shares of the company directly to us in exchange for money. So instead of the money going inside the company's bank account, we will receive it personally, which is a great way as a founder to de-risk the business, meaning that because our business was growing so quickly, the value of the business gets bigger and bigger, which means that it's more and more pressure on your like uh, shoulder as a founder because we started the company with a thousand euro and after three and a half years, it was valued at $150 million. And that's when they decided to give us like $30 million for 20%. So we each took like $10 million at the time. So for me, I think it was really important to have the discussion as soon as possible, just to make sure that we were aligned on what we wanted to do and how we wanted to do it and just do it in a in the smartest way possible. Obviously, I think like an investor, because they are shareholder of the company, they have certain rights, they have voting rights, they have like a uh, a certain power in a company, that's for sure. So whenever you're making company-wide decision, especially if it involves, you know, like uh, what's going to be the future of the company, the investors have obviously like uh, an impact. When we go through these investments um, and come together in these partnerships, we go through a lot of serious work to protect the, the company, protect the shareholders, ourselves, the other founders from situations that might arise. The only thing is like when everything is going well, it's easy, you know, to see who's on your side. Like everyone's on your side, everyone's cheering for you. But when uh, shit hit the fan, who's going to be sitting next to you, you know, and cleaning all the mess? Often you will see that there are way fewer people than when you're going to the top. When you're a growth investor or in venture capital or, or, or growth equity as like a minority investor, you usually talk about being a partner 
two companies and founders. And situations like this is when that becomes a bit more real um, as, as kind of a yeah. concept. Um, and, and it's not really when company is doing really well and you're just high-fiving each other on, a, on a, you know month to month yes. when you're like an amazing partner it's like when you hit obstacles help support each other and react and respect each other I think going through an experience like this or, or slow months or other other situations um, is when you are becoming partners together and strengthening your your relationship just after I hang up the phone with uh, with Oli I was very like uh, confident about the future and the success of the company because I felt like we were really aligned and that we from the beginning have always been aligned. Fortunately we were in a situation where um, having gone through our investment I felt confident that we had the right kind of protections in place that the company could navigate forward and that our investment would be okay, the company would be okay and so the focus then really became supporting Guillaume, trying to understand from him how he sees the situation going forward, what are the changes he thinks will need to be made in the company. I think what I really like about having, you know, like this uh, investors and now like board meeting is mainly like the, the question that they're asking. They're not here like to tell you or to tell me like, what should I do with the company, et cetera, et cetera. They're just asking questions on things that for them, either they don't understand it or they don't find it like always logical and they want to understand why. So it's always like very genuine question. And sometimes, you know, just the fact that they are asking the rush question make you think about the things that you should do for the company. And I think during that time of transition, it was exactly the same thing. They were basically asking me, you know, like all the questions, like, do you know exactly what they were doing? Uh, do you know, like uh, what were they taking care of exactly? Uh, do you know if someone in the team could potentially replace them? Do you know if we need to hire like uh, someone external, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? And having all these answers step by step, I think allowed me to kind of lay out a very specific plan of what needed to be done and how we were going to do it, either with the team internally or with people from the outside. And I felt overall it was, uh, yeah, it was really cool and helpful. I think it's actually ended up being really strengthening for our partnership because Guillaume and, and, and ourselves have, you know, really gone through something challenging together and come through um, with the company in better shape. I mean, it's incredible seeing what Guillaume and the team have been able to do, doubling the business, making acquisition. You know, the other aspects, when we're investing in a company, we're backing a team, yes, but we're also backing a whole set of dynamics around a market and um, mm. a, a company and its product and its position and all of those things. And the resilience of the business Mm. Uh, and the characteristics of a business that make it resilient are really important in this kind of situation because it's got, you know, tens of thousands of customers. It's a profitable business. It's not one that's raising to the next raise. There's time to patiently, profitably navigate developments as they arise. You know, we're, we're on, a, on a strong course. It was just really reassuring for me. It was like, I'm clearly in business with somebody who has got really strong principles and uh, is really focused on doing the right thing. Guillaume clearly sees the path from here to being a $100 million revenue company and doing that, building the company the way that he's built the company to date, not following necessarily a, a model of how other $100 million revenue companies have been built, but doing it very efficiently and in a really innovative way. You know, they are shareholder of the company, but they are really people who I can count on. During this transition, two to four times per week, we were on the phone with Oli from uh, 9 p.m. until midnight. And we were messaging on WhatsApp every single day. So he has kids, uh, he has a life, he has like uh, his investment fund, etc. But he was still there and I really appreciated it. I think we're creating some strong foundation for the future. To be honest, I was just super scared for my job at first. For me, you know, to be the one announcing it and, you know, like explaining the reason, it felt like really weird. Quoi? <laughs> Comment est-ce possible? Ma première réaction, ça a été d'aller voir Guillaume pour lui demander si je pouvais annuler ma démission. I think the, the biggest stress I had was, uh, am I gonna lose the entire team or not?